in a complete erosion of the freedom of speech and expression of South Korean people, the United Progressive Party has been banned by the so-called Constitutional Court of South Korea. The move has gone because of supposed of the supposed 2013 sabotage plot against the South Korean government last year. This plot, of course, was based complete was completely baseless and was asserted primarily on the was prosec prosecuted solely on the on the claims that the United Progressive Party uh, and its and it's basically its factions were had pro North Korean sympathies and had violated the basic democratic order of the country. So basically, a group that that had the right to freedom of speech, who said that they happened to technically in this case supported Korean unification is prosecuted and violate their their right to freedom of speech is is a violation of your democratic order and your and is a sabotage to your government and makes them pro North Korean. Uh, let's take a look first about how how the UPP operates, right? The UPP is a progressive alliance of different revisionist and bourgeois liberal friggin' organizations. Organizations that have had not necessarily North Korean sympathies is more that they have the pro-Korean unification project, something that has always been opposed by the the South Korean government and has definitely been opposed by the very uh, dystopian, uh, the very dystopian uh, ideology of the uh, part uh, part when he's government. Um, the, this organization, the UPP, is nothing more than a uh, has not been nothing more but a very liberal party. It, 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 like, I would compare them with the green, somewhat with like the Democratic Party and the Green Party of the United States. Uh, certain organizations like that, but very bourgeois. They they are not they're not challenging the rule of South Korea's government in any way. They're not doing anything that sabotages the government. The only reason that they are being prosecuted is because of this witch hunt, this paranoia against North Korea, the demonization of North Korea, and of course the very nationalist, militarist policy that Park's government has and has held for such a long time. Now, it's also important to note that Park Gwen he uh, Park Gwen he is the daughter of Park Ch um, of Park Chung Hee, who was the military dictator of North Korea from from 1962 to 1979. For 17 years, he basically brutally oppressed his people. He cracked down on political dissent. He basically held the he basically held the country under an iron fist. He set up, you know, a secret police unit. He had basically political prisoner camps within the country he completely he violated human rights he was a complete and total dick in every sense of the word dictator he brutalized millions and he cracked down on political dissent he was very anti-communist and that should be no surprise because that is exactly what the North, what the uh, South Korean government has pretty much done, you know, for quite a number of years now. They've just instead it's just after Park's regime basically crumbled and fell because he pretty much drained the country economically. The country was in an eco economic decay by the time he he left power and well not left power by the time he was assassinated. And yet, it seems like his daughter is doing the exact same thing. In fact, it's no surprise considering that his, uh, that his daughter is no, not even an apologist, but an actual defender of her father's regime, saying that it was a revolution to save the country. 
So basically, it was a revolution against a South Korean uh, liberal policy of which they were planning Korean unification, planning to give concessions to the North to North Korea to eventually set the project forward to become unified. And that would, and apparently also the fact that your father led your country down a brutal road to fascist to, to pretty much neo-fascism and economically bankrupted your country. That was the supposed revolution that you were talking about to consolidate more power into the hands of the ruling class. That was the so-called revolution that you called for. No, that is not revolution. That is reactionism. And quite frankly, it doesn't surprise me considering that she is doing the exact same thing by basically going out there and opposing the by basically cracking down on any dissent to her regime by banning the UPP and pretty much any the mere fact that the mere mention of communism, Marxist Leninism, Maoism, any of that, the mere mention of it, the mere to even so much as being being caught within the country uh, mm -hmm. even having a pro communist sentiment, you probably reading um it, reading Ma uh, Maoist works is practically a taboo in South Korea. Practically, practically having any sort of um, any sort of uh, having any sort of study at all towards communism, towards even towards actually becoming more educated about it, is actually a taboo in South Korea communist parties are completely and outright banned. And now this move to basically even crack down on bourgeois liberal attempts is much like kind of the McCarthyist sentiment that has occurred that occurred primarily in the United States in about the 19 late 1940s and early 1950s that you know or and that carried on for you know in the policy, the national policy of the United States for many, many years and exists in some forms today. But, quite frankly, instead of just, it's not just a McCarthyist sentiment, this is a very nationalist sentiment. This is a very, this is just outright totalitarianism because now it has really gotten to the point where it seems that part when he is trying to consolidate her power and trying to basically an outright uh, ban any um, just completely an outright ban all opposition kind of the same way again that oh I don't know um, a guy named Hitler did back in 1933 and over the during the course of the 30s he basically you know he banned political uh, any political party that was against his regime. He killed numerous communists, millions of communists, along with the uh, you know killing of homosexuals, gay uh, homosexuals, um, Jewish people, disabled people, etc. The same you know same things that were done by the basically this whole sentiment has carried on throughout throughout history I mean the very fact of the matter is is that Park Queen He has basically gone to the whole extent where she's banned this political party and is looking like she's trying to do the same thing that her father did in which she basically consolid is consolidating her power and trying to frankly hold on to what pseudo legitimacy that this pipe dream that her government has and all because they are afraid of what would happen if her country oh I don't know actually gave any sort of concession, actually open dialogue with Pyongyang. The very fact that they're just so paranoid that this group is, you know, destroying the country. So she thinks herself much like her father, a revolutionary to, uh, to save the country. 
No, what you're doing is basically doing what your father did in the 1960s and the same exact thing. You are trying to get rid of political dissent. Most likely what's next is the killing of political, prison, uh, the political prisoners, the setting up of camps, the setting up of secret police again, the complete degeneration of any sort of talks with the North, which, frankly, is a dangerous situation to be putting yourself in at this point. And just the fact that anybody that basically so much as disagrees with your rule is subject to prosecution. It's a complete, it's not only just prosec, it's prosecution through persecution is exactly what it is. And what I find ironic is that the same constitutional court is probably all, is actually eroding away the basic constitutional values that a country should have, uh, like freedom of speech, freedom of expression, the freedom of movement. It's all being eroded away. So much that even groups like human, um, Amnesty International, the most bourgeois liberal of friggin' human rights organizations, has even gone so far as to question the the authenticity of free, uh, of the authorities to defend uh, to uphold freedom of political expression and uh, free speech and all that it is one of those it is one of those things that is just that is actually mind boggling that the most bourgeois liberal group of human rights groups and the most you know you know, one of the groups that practically does nothing to help anybody else basically just comes out and makes statements is actually saying that South Korea is be is basically becoming dictatorial. When a human rights organization starts to say what you're doing is wrong, it probably is. And going so far to outright bring down any sort of opposition to your role is co it basically says a lot to your own integrity and says a lot to the legitimacy that you think that you have. If you have to ban political parties, if you have to set up secret police, if you have to set up these different... if you basically have to govern by an iron fist, then you had no legitimacy to begin with. And I think that's what Miss Park and her government fears, is the fact that they fear that they have that their legitimacy is being eroded away they fear these new idea these new and even old historic ideas they they freaking fear it they fear the they fear their power being threatened and what's next is I'm it is really sad because I know that what's coming next is going to definitely be that is political prisoners assassinations we're going to see um, we're going to see crackdowns probably on on internet freedom and press freedom, although press freedom is already pretty much denied in South Korea, and we're going to see the crackdown on any on cell phone use. So, frankly, I the only way i can the only way i can basically summarize this is that the way that south korea is going the way that park when he is sending her country is that i think she is doing exactly what her father did the people that voted for her actually voted for her in that last election you're getting what you deserve you completely fucked over your country you are actually traitors to your country you're horrible people for voting for her, first of all. Because, frankly, you should have known better. A woman that goes out and legitimize, tries to legitimize and defend her father's brutal regime should have been a warning sign. The fact that it, exactly what her father did, she is practically following to the numbers. She's already consolidating her power. She's banning any political dissent. And basically what next is exactly as I've, as I've said. 
and I completely worry that that's where she, what she's doing. She's trying to basically take a more and more executive and more dictatorial role. I wouldn't even be surprised if before long that there isn't that the military doesn't take political uh, seats in in a legislative or advisory body because I frankly think that eventually what's going to happen is that the true legislative body is going to basically become what the Reichstag did in Germany during uh, once Hitler came to power. It will only become an advisory body. It will because it will only be made up of people of her own party, military generals and military admirals and other crap like that. It's going to be a complete totalitarian regime. So, frankly, if that's what you decided to vote for, you get what you deserve. And it scares me because I know people that live in that country and that are probably going to become victims of her reign of terror. I worry for them. But let's just sum up, but let me just kind of, while I'm on this big anti-park crusade, this very uh, anti-South Korean government crusade, if their intention is to basically consolidate their power and become a true di dictatorial totalitarian regime, then let me just say something that will probably get me arrested uh, the moment that I ever land upon South Korean soil. You should be afraid. Because if you have to legitimize your rule by clamping down on your people's freedom, further clamping down on your people's freedom, if you think that you have to legitimize your rule by banning political parties, banning op any opposition to your rule, possibly in the next step assassinating your and killing your own people the fact that you have to basically send uh, that you you have slave labor going on within your own the, the southern regions of your country if you think that you actually have to legitimize your role by autocratic by autocratic executive power then you had no legitimacy to begin with you are pathetic you are weak you are a dictator you are the daughter of a dictator, and your regime will not last. It will eventually fall, and I'm hoping that the South Korean people realize that, that they realize their mistakes, that the people that are already radicalized continue to radicalize, unite in solidarity. I'm hoping people who did not think of her as a dictator before be, begin or have already started to see her as a dictator and radicalize and unite in solidarity to overthrow this growing totalitarian fascist threat in your country. The very fact is that if Park believes that she is going to reinstate the old regime of her father just keep in mind what happened to your father when he pushed his people too far when he economically ruined the country and ruined the suit and ruined that pretty little that, that, that pretty little possibility of reuniting Korean families together as one nation. You fear your people. You fear the idea of an actual worker state because your people are primarily a culture based upon working class peasants and factory workers and all around your people have been a have been a primarily a proletariat nation. God forbid that the people actually want equality. You fear that. You fear losing your privileged background. You fear 
losing that ruling class power that you've held for so long, backed up obviously by U.S. interests and money, and you fear losing your U.S. partners because as the U.S. empire itself declines, so will you because you will lose your defender the one that has defended you since 1950 you know 1950 when basically your country was on that your pretty little lifestyle was almost wiped out by the working class when basically the north and southern revolutionaries rose up to create a united workers state you fear that and because of that you think that the only way to keep that in power to keep working the working class state out of power to keep the, the people from ruling the nation the way it should be is to clamp down on your people to kill your people to brutalize your people and to oppress their rights their freedom of their fundamental right to speech movement and other freedom of expression that is the way that you want to rule then you have no right to rule you have no you have no legitimacy and frankly I hope your regime does not last much longer. Down with Park Wing He. Power to the people.